Welcome back to Tech Tech. I'm Adam Housley in Los Angeles. You know, there's a lot of threats, of course, our country faces around the globe and also here domestically. But one topic that's kind of starting to come out, it's been talked about uh, maybe more obscure and more obscure locations in the last year or so, but now becoming more mainstream. And that is our power grid and some of the threats it faces. And here to join us and talk about this threat in uh, Washington, D.C. is uh, Colonel Cedric Layton. Uh, he's a Air Force, retired Air Force colonel, and he's a, the, also the president and, of Cedric Layton and Associates. You can find him on Twitter, at Cedric Layton. And, you know, Colonel, this is a topic, as you and I spoke off, off camera just for a short time, that, you know, really people knew about in some circles, but on a, on a grand scale, most Americans really had no idea. And it's just now, I guess thanks to the NSA chairman coming out and talking about it, but it really should be a topic that Americans need to know about and it needs to be, there's some things that need to be changed, correct? Absolutely, Adam. You know, and when you talk about protecting the critical infrastructure, you're thinking about, uh, you know, making sure it doesn't work, uh, you know, that it works, I should say, in terms of uh, terrorist attacks, that there is, you know, nothing that uh, can happen from a physical sense that would destroy our ability to get power, destroy our ability to get gas and oil and uh, products like that. Well, what is happening nowadays is that the virtual world, the cyber world, is really becoming like the real world. And because that's the case, it it becomes more important now more than ever to understand exactly what the cyber threat against the critical infrastructure actually is. And when you have statements by Admiral Rogers and others in a position of great, uh, great power and, and knowledge and understanding of what this threat is, it be, and they make these public pronouncement, it, pronouncements, it becomes very, very clear that these types of threats are real, they're growing, and they need to be actually weighed by the American people so they can make better decisions on what to do in order to protect themselves and their communities. Well, is there also the ability to put pressure on, on our leadership around the country, both state, federal, and local, to do something about it? Because I've been told, I believe, it's like if phys there's two types of attacks here. There's the physical attack, of course which I've been told, I believe, there's like eight locations where if, if it was hit correctly, it could potentially knock out power for a couple of months. Um, and then you have the other ability, which is, of course, using the Internet and using you know, the hot, more high-tech methods of, of causing problems. Right, Adam. And here's, here's the way it generally works. What you have is not only eight locations that can be attacked from a physical standpoint, and if you pick the right eight locations, you could, at the very least, do considerable damage to the power grid as it exists right now. But here's the other factor. The United States is divided into three basic power grids. Uh, there's an eastern grid, a western grid, and the Texas grid. And the one that is most protected uh, from being interfered with is actually the Texas grid in terms of its physical abilities, its physical attributes. Uh, but if one of the other grids, the eastern grid or the western grid, were affected by a concentrated cyber attack or a physical attack or both at the same time, the consequences could potentially be catastrophic. And what you would see is something that would have a cascading effect, not only through the infrastructure, but also for society at large. People that require medical care of a specific type, let's say people on dialysis machines would be affected through the hospital system. The hospitals themselves would have to shut down if they don't have power. There are so many different things that are really required in this particular case that you have to step back and actually determine what the vulnerabilities of the infrastructure actually are and in order to of course protect yourself from from these vulnerabilities and when that's the case uh, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of what they call industrial control systems and protecting them from cyber attack that hasn't even been started right. in this country and uh, there are a lot of efforts to mitigate that uh, but they haven't gone nearly far enough to do so uh, in Congress legislation to protect the critical infrastructure has been installed for a number of years. Uh, there is no concrete protection from a cyber perspective of the critical infrastructure, at least none that has been ensconced in law. There are individual things individual ut utilities can do. Then you have all kinds of possibilities that way. But you don't have a coherent plan. You don't have a coherent national strategy that protects society at large. There are elements of protection for the government, but right. no elements of protection for the country as a whole. Colonel, you know, I, I, my, my, my concern is that some of these replacements that would need to be brought in aren't even made in the U.S. I'm told they take eight to ten months in some cases to be made in other countries, specifically China. Um, 
Right. What can I mean? I know you kind of touched on it, but what can we do? I mean, obviously the government's protected itself, but the individual is kind of left hanging out in the cold, so to speak. One of the key things that that we have to deal with is the fact that uh, you know the individual is really dependent on society's institutions in order to protect him or herself from uh, a cyber attack that affects a broader structure like uh, like the critical infrastructure. So things that can be done is first of all you know a good lobbying effort can be uh, put in place where people actually step up and demand of their elected leaders both at the local level and at the state level as well as at the federal level that something be taken care of and that uh, cyber standards be put in place. The other thing that needs to be done is utilities in general, which uh, and they're a very cautious industry, the utility industry, but utilities in general need to understand that the standards that the government puts out through regulatory bodies like the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and the Nuclear Energy Regulatory Commission, right. those are basic standards. They are not standards that uh, are a really good minimum. They, in fact, are standards that are the bare minimum, and they need to right. be exceeded. And that's that's really what we're looking at in this case. We need to really demand right, that our, our systems are protected in that way. Colonel Lay, we really appreciate your time. Uh, obviously an alarming topic, one that we'll continue to follow, and hopefully this will start the conversation. We appreciate you coming on to Tech Take, and we'll definitely stay in touch with you about this one. You bet, Adam. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.